Hello children. Welcome back into the fourth lecture of chapter number 8 of standard 9th. In the previous chapter we had seen about the main aspects of the constitution. In that we had seen mainly the three kind of list that were the union list, the state list and the concurrent list. We had also seen and discussed about the residual powers. So we are going to see about the remaining features, main features of the constitution into this particular lecture. So let us go further. India, <coughs> Indian Federation system. Now Indian is a federation system, means it has basically two parts, the state and the union. Okay, They are different from each other. So union, as we have already seen that India is a union of the state right means all the parts all the states are part of the unit called india but at the same time india is separate from the states and state is separate from india but combinedly they are a part they are considered equal so they are different from each other see state is different and union is different and that is already marked into the constitution Okay, related to the functions, laws, and all the all the possible uh, powers that are being distributed are already mentioned into the constitution. Now, in this union has more powers. Eh? Union has more powers in comparison to the state. Okay, this we have already seen, right? In the list also we had seen there were 97 subjects on which the state. There were 97 subjects on which the union head can form the can form the rules right while there were 66 subjects into the state list okay and that's why it is considered as a very very important feature of it union list has more powers we had already seen this union list has more powers in comparison to the state list next part is the citizenship next part is the citizenship now in normal federation there is dual citizenship okay in normal federation there is dual citizenship dual citizenship means two citizenships are provided like in USA now in USA there are two citizenships are given to any of the citizen means suppose a person is residing into say state of Texas then he is a citizen of Texas and he is a citizen of USA but that is not the case in India in India only single citizenship is provided only single citizenship is provided that means a person residing in Bihar can be a citizen of Bihar but he is considered only an Indian. He, his citizenship will only be an Indian citizenship. Cannot be considered a Bihari citizenship. Cannot get citizenship because all the states are part of India. All the states are part of India and that's why India have accepted single citizenship policy. Okay, so every Indian, every Indian irrespective of where he stays, where he resides, where he is having his home, he is only considered as Indian. Next is emergency provision. Now emergency, you might have heard this word in recent times, emergency. Now what is emergency? Emergency means when the condition is not normal, when the condition is not normal, same like right now we are facing. Okay usually this is the time that you are traveling with your parents into different part of India or even into foreign countries enjoying your vacation but what you are doing right now you are sitting into your homes studying online staying into your homes keeping yourself safe so this is an emergency this is not a normal situation see constitution specifies certain conditions when an emergency can be declared see constitution has given certain conditions when their emergency can be declared okay 
emergency cannot be declared any time but there are certain conditions which arises and those conditions can be termed as emergency example at the time of war so when there is war okay the government the central government can impose an emergency or there is an external attack see external attack means any other country is attacking us from outside or constitutional breakdown right constitutional breakdown is there that time also constitutional breakdown means basically no the so you can say not following the rules and regulations formed by the constitution okay and uh are you might be knowing that our country is a democratic country but suppose someone tries to rule our country like a dictator like you have already studied into about hitler same way then that is considered constitutional breakdown so in those cases also emergency can be implemented financial emergency see financial financial suppose just imagine that the money with the country gets sucked up it goes off right at that time financial emergency can be also implemented okay now why uh, emergency in financial emergency can be implemented due to the prices of the very high prices okay or inflation the financial emergency can be declared central government has more powers to deal with emergency say central government comes into the action and it has more powers to deal with the emergency implemented into the country at the time of emergency india turns into unitary system this needs to be remember at the time of emergency india turns into unitary system means india becomes one unit okay and only center will be ruling over all the states all the state right india becomes a unitary system at the time of the emergency next is the parliamentary system our parliamentary system is very unique the parliament is the supreme authority representing people see parliament is the supreme authority representing people this is situated into delhi you might have seen this photograph at many places our parliament is bicameral bicameral means it has two houses it has two houses it has two houses okay the upper house is known as the rajya sabha the upper house is known as rajya sabha while the lower house is called the lok sabha this needs to be remembered upper house is known as rajya sabha while the lower lower house is known as lok sabha okay and both houses are situated into this particular building of the parliament now you can how you dif- how you can differentiate then you might have seen this scenes on television the rajya sabha has a red carpet on its floor and it has 250 members into it how many 250 members while the lok sabha which is lower house has a green carpet is a green carpet and it has 545 members 545 members into the lok sabha okay we will be studying about raj sabha and lok sabha into the later chapters into detail and that's why i am not going into detail into this particular video will be studying a full chapter over the parliamentary system so we'll go further now how does the government run how does the government run now you can see here the government of india government of india is basically divided into two parts the union and the state now under the union who is the head of the union then the president is the head of the union government under him comes the prime minister now prime minister is elected by the people prime minister is elected by the people of india and under the prime minister are the councils of minister all the other minister finance minister home minister defense minister railway minister agriculture minister industry minister and all other ministers come under prime ministers right and they are the 
members of the our parliament they are mps they are member of the parliament now in the state the governor is the head of the state governor is considered head of the state and is elected so rather selected by the president is selected by the president you can say he is the president of the state right his powers are almost similar to the president of the senate under the governor comes the chief minister comes the chief minister who is the head of the government and the head of the government which is ruling under into that particular state under chief minister are the council of minister again the minister at the state level right and they are the this chief minister and council of ministers are part of the legislative assembly they are part of the legislative assembly okay so you can see union the president prime minister and the council of minister state the governor chief minister and the councils of the minister next is independent and impartial judiciary our judiciary is very very important our country democracy is basically working on three pillars right three pillars first is the legislative second is the executive and third is the judiciary judiciary is a very important part and it needs to be independent and impartial see in the case of dispute between state and union judiciary plays an important role so in whenever there is a problem between state and union related to any of the uh, issues the judiciary plays a very important role into it like an umpire into a match you might have seen into a match whenever there is a problem umpire plays a important role in federal government separate independent judiciary in center and state okay there are centers in the state we have already seen this like the supreme court the high court that we are going to see further in india only one judiciary system is there in india there is only one judiciary system and it always goes into the ascending order supreme court regulates all high court this needs to be remembered supreme court is the highest court of india apex court of india and it regulates all other courts high courts judiciary is independent of all executives see okay executive here means all the government officials and politicians so no government official and politician can interfere into the working of the judiciary they cannot interfere into the working of the judiciary and the judiciary is independent of any of the government rules and regulation it works independently but it is a part and parcel of the system this is the photograph of the supreme court this is a photograph of supreme court you might have seen into newspapers into news channels right and it is situated into new delhi this is the photograph of gujarat high court which is situated at gandhinagar ahmedabad road now this is the pyramid of our judicial system supreme court is at the top it is the apex court of india it is known as the apex court of india apex means the highest court of india under supreme court comes all the high courts all the high courts which are at the state level and under those high courts are the district courts which are at the different districts and all other local courts so you can see this pyramid it always goes this way it always goes into ascending order you cannot come from top to bottom if you have suppose fought a case into district court then you can appeal into high court if you and into supreme court but if you have fought a case into supreme court you cannot go back right so supreme court's decision is considered final adult franchise now this we have already discussed any citizen who is 18 and above has a right to vote any citizen who has 18 and above has the right to vote without any discrimination say we have already discussed without any discrimination without any discrimination of caste color religion creed region sex and any kind of occupation or status 
ask now to celebrate this festival to celebrate the festival of election right national voters day is celebrated right 25th january see 25th january is considered national voters day secularism see this word you might have heard this word many a times in the newspaper secularism now what is secularism secularism means following no religion and respecting all the religion at the same time the state here state means the government state has no religion the government does not have a religion it is impartial it is impartial to all the religion it is supporting all the religion people cannot be discriminated discriminated means bhedbhav people cannot be discriminated on the basis of religion see no person can be discriminated on the basis of the religion and that's why that's why all the religions are considered equal and safe state does not interfere in matter of religion see whenever there is a religion matter state does not interfere into it but at the same time state also keeps control over the religion bodies and organization to see that it does not hamper any other religion it does not create problem for any other religion people are free to follow any religion people are free see they can follow any religion they want state will not interfere right it is purely on the conscience of the people whether they want to follow a religion or other it depends on them next comes fundamental rights now this is very important again in the <coughs> we have a whole chapter related to it but here we are going to see into just short about what are fundamental rights like we have fundamental okay we have duties same way we have fundamental rights same fundamental rights are those rights which are essential for intellectual moral and spiritual development of the people all these rights are such kind of rights which each and every person gets right at the kind of the birth without any kind of discrimination that's why they are called the fundamental right fundamental is basic what is the meaning of fundamental basic rights they are considered basic right now why these rights are needed so that the person can develop into all these matters intellectually morally and spiritually right now what are these rights first is right to equality we are not going to go into detail as we have a chapter whole on this particular so we'll just discuss it right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom of religion cultural and educational right and the most important right of to constitutional remedies so there are six fundamental rights and they are given to each and every person who is born into india next is the second side of the coin it comes as fundamental duties so fundamental duties are also very very important part of our nation and constitution fundamental duties are sections of the constitution of india that prescribes the fundamental obligations okay it tells us about the obligations the duties that a person should do to its citizens and the duties and rights of the citizens of the states it tells the these are mentioned into the our constitution and it gives tells each and every citizen into india that this kind of obligation needs to be followed by them this are this is a, a excerpt from the <coughs> from your textbook this is from your textbook and these are fundamental rights so duties which are given into them you can study again we will be studying into detail so we are not reading each of them next comes the directive principle of state policy dpsp dps is stands for the directive principles right are guidelines or 15 principles given to the federal institution governing the state of india there are right these are some of the instructions these are given by the government sorry by the constitution to the government to run the government properly smoothly and in a better way now most importantly is that they are not enforceable into the court if any of this directive principle is not followed by the state you cannot go into a court against it the principles have been inspired by the directive principles given in constitution of ireland see this we have borrowed from the constitution of ireland right so directive principle again we are going to discuss so we are not discussing into detail here 
provisions for backward sections and tribes see provisions for the backward sections and the tribe now you might be knowing about the different sections of our society okay in the olden times there were the varna systems but right now there is the caste systems so here mainly the generals the obcs sc sts and ews are included so in indian constitution obc are described as socially and back educationally backward classes or the short form is sebc S E B C O B C stands for other backward castes, other backward caste. While the actual uh, form is S E B C, that means socially, educationally, and backward classes. Now this O B C is different from state to state. Means one caste can be into O B C list into. a state which may not in to be obc list of another state and that's why they are separate from one state to other next are the scheduled castes or the okay they are short form is sc the short form is sc scheduled caste and scheduled tribe st are officially designated group into india okay they are given list is given into the constitution those caste and tribes will be included into sc and st they comprom compromises 16.6 and 8.6 representative scheduled caste are 16.6% population of india and scheduled tribes are 8.6% population of india as per 2011 census now the reservation policy you might have heard this into newspapers and news reservation policy is a process of reserving certain percentage of seats maximum 50 percentage for a certain class such as schedule schedule tribes and backward classes okay there is basically reservation means keeping safe for the use of this particular section of the society now why that is done because of the olden times this caste and this tribes had not got equal rights like the others and that's why to make uh, them also beneficial to get them equal rights the constitution have framed such kind of policies that will give equal status to this rights this caste and tribes so that they can also stand equally in the society now you can see this particular diagram here you might see 41% part population is belongs to the general 22% belongs to the sc and the st 27% belongs to the obc while the ews now this word is basically a new for you ews stands for economically weaker section so with this we complete our chapter